Woo, we are live, folks. Hello, hello. I am the Gothic Storyteller, and we got alongside us here Krypton246. We just call him Krypton here. Thank you so much, Krypton, for being here. Uh, this is the very first uh, script club officially. We were supposed to do one about two weeks back, but um, there were some... Uh, there was just some conflicts going on and everything at the time and so i was like you know what this is probably the better way to actually introduce it with a guest so uh let's give a hand here for krypton thank you thank you so much for having me i appreciate it um i've been super excited about this and i didn't realize when you asked me to do this that this was the first time you were doing it so yeah because i think when i asked you it had been like weeks back so my plan was to cover um fright night and, and I was going to cover, like, the difference between the script and the movie and my thoughts on the writing. Uh, and then shit just happened to the point where even though I had all the work and everything set up, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not gonna do this. It's like there was just some stuff going on. But, you know, I, I was super happy to do this because if it includes comics and horror, I love it. Like, I love horror and comics. And so I was like, you know what? The Midnight Suns, me and you were already playing the game. Um mm -hmm. I, it feels like kind of like when what, like did you start playing it this year or were you playing it last year as well um it was probably i would say the beginning of this year sometime yeah it, it's a very yeah. long game like when it comes to like crunch time numbers and everything and it's like holy hell so it, it kind of felt like you know this was destined to happen it's like yeah, we've been playing it for the majority of the year and everything <laughs> yeah and it's like, you know what, like, let's give it a shot. Let's sit there and see how would we do the Marvel's Midnight Suns in the MCU. Um, and we already we already have some of these characters that what we're going to talk about. They're already in there. Uh, they've made their debut rather off screen or on screen. Um, mm. we're, we're talking about you there, Blade. We know you're there. Um, it's just Somewhere. it's just sad that that movie ain't going to get a sequel. Because believe it or not, yeah. I love the end of Eternals, that post credit scene. I love that. And I was like, okay, I think I'm ready for a sequel. And then they're finally mm -hmm. like, how many years later? They're like, yeah, that's not coming out. And it's like, yeah. All right, well, all that shit means nothing. But uh, we are going to move on to um, who are the Midnight Suns? Uh, the Midnight Suns are a group of supernatural heroes. Uh, they're either heroes or former villains uh, and monsters who are called upon when a great conflict related to magic emerges. Uh, they are the team that you rely on when other superhero groups have failed in the past and cannot stop the unseen threat. Uh, throughout most of their history, the Midnight Suns are often formed to battle the mother of demons, Lilith, and her offspring as they attempt to bring Cathan into the realm. Uh, once that mission is accomplished, they usually disband, reuniting only when the next cataclysmic event arises. Uh, what do you know about the Midnight Suns, Krypton, before we jump into our, our fantasy bookings? So um, I don't have a whole lot of history uh, reading the Min anything Midnight Suns related. I mean, I, I, of course, have come across the majority of these characters just as, like, guest appearances and other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as just as far as them as a team and some of their main plot lines, storylines in the comics, I'm just, I'm not super, super familiar with. Um, speaking of which, I did... Decide to put this on in the background, which is a Marvel team up with uh, featuring Man Thing. So um, I was kind of going through and see, trying to find something fitting for that. So you know, I've never actually read most of the Marvel team up stuff with Spider Man. Like a, mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, the stuff that I have, like that's back catalog and trade paperback. For some reason, uh, it's never Spider Man, but it's always the Thing. It felt like the Thing mm -hmm. was like the backup character. It's like, well, do we have a Spidey story? He's like, no, but we got a few things laying about. And I was like, oh, let's just use them and everything. So yeah. I, I've I've read a few Marvel horror comics where they've had, like, the thing as the support. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the hell? It's like the thing is is battling a scarecrow that comes out of a painting. But that's supposed to be the <laughs> that's supposed to be our hero of the story and everything because he's trying to stop cultists from, I guess, killing in his name. I, I don't yeah. know. Weird Marvel 70s horror. I love it. And, uh... I'm a big proponent of that. I love the original run of Johnny Blaze's Ghost Rider. And mm -hmm. it's kind of sad that really we haven't gotten that in the MCU. I feel like you could tell a road story like that in a family-friendly setting. Oh, absolutely. Ha have a absolutely. stunt performer. But uh, I have no clue what Marvel's Kevin Feige is doing. 
Um, <laughs> and I love some of the uh, the other YouTube, um, I guess you call them like film analysis or or just video essayists and everything. Uh, when they do stuff like on like Marvel, it's like, see, this is why you should have written it like this. And as like you're watching it, it was like, wow, that sounds so much better than the product that we got. What were they thinking? It was like, get these guys to write it. Obviously, it seems like the writers that do it that claim, like, oh, yeah, we've been fans of them for, like, years now. And it's like, really? This character just came out two years ago. You've been yeah. fans? since, And so it kind of just, like, makes you wonder. It's like, how much of that is actually sadly thrown on the screenwriter or how much of it is studio interference of, well, we have to have this because it has to connect with this. And, and it's like, what did Kevin Feige said? It was like, oh, well, we're Kevin Feige's boss, so we don't really give a shit what what kevin says yeah. and everything which is i don't know if that's the thing that's all speculation and everything but there's yeah. been quite a few chances that we've had some supernatural stuff happen in the mcu and the thing that i hate about it like dr strange hi layla and um dr strange and thor which to me i always looked at them as mystical beings is that the mcu has thrown them under science it's just a form of science it's like can you yeah. just embrace the supernatural let let the supernatural be the supernatural let magic be magic yeah it's just yeah there doesn't have to be an explanation for it all the time and i i like i kind of get it because if you really look at marvel's history even some of like their modern day stuff they always have an answer for what is magic of oh well it's just like a form of alchemy and science and all this i was like really why can't it just why do you have something that's magical dc's doing it and yes they've rebooted over 50 fucking times but at least they believe in the magic <laughs> yeah. of, of the supernatural to a certain extent and um uh so like yeah i've always been like a fan of ghost rider uh i've read the majority of the run of the tomb of dracula which it's campy as fuck it's campy but i love it because anytime they got blade in there who looks like a robin hood type character uh, -huh. uh believe it or not it's really really good uh i haven't read it myself i do have a, a couple of issues actually but uh i i haven't taken the time to actually read the series so tomb of dracula was very strong in its first i think 20 issues and then after that like sadly almost any kind of horror character this is where i feel like marvel's horror it's like they have to have limited issues because like it stops being spooky but like that first issue of tomb of dracula oh my god it's freaking beautiful uh we may be talking about dracula among other supernatural characters um but uh i i guess like i guess it's time to get into the fantasy booking of uh of what we're gonna do and we're gonna start off um we we have in placement two phases that we are going to discuss and talk about uh phase one is going to be rise of the midnight suns and the second phase is going to be uh Cthon's awakening uh so we figured that we definitely try to mimic a lot of what the phase one of the marvel cinematic universe did where it introduced and did one shots of each character we get to sit there and know who they are uh what they are and we do have a mixture of movies and tv shows um because i like that and i feel like if you if you definitely limit how many tv shows you have the mm. people will watch it and they'll understand and follow along compared to kind of like what you know because how many shows does marvel now have since endgame uh, since endgame they've kind of like oversaturated it a little bit I think it's close um, to like almost 10 shows, huh? It's insane. And so it becomes very daunting for anybody, uh, for new watchers, right? Yeah. Um, it, it becomes super daunting. Like, I, I, I don't want to, not me personally, because I watch all of it, right? But but for somebody new coming in, they're not going to want to sit there and watch um, hours and hours and hours and hours of content just to be able to understand the new movie. Yeah. So I get that. Or they have to go back if it's pre in game but maybe there's a current event that happened and it's like you tell me i have to go watch six seasons of agents of shield which mm -hmm. i could only have stomached all the way to ghost rider after ghost rider it really got terrible in my opinion but they had some really good ideas uh going um but it's like oh we have to go all the way back there just to understand mm -hmm. this new movie and everything which i like that they want to be intricate but i think that they definitely have to limit themselves and mm -hmm watch exactly what they want you know uh so for this we definitely did limit ourselves i think i only had two or three shows 
Yeah. Or and I think one, one show of them is actually series. So yes. Yeah. Um. So uh, we 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 definitely limit it, and so we're gonna go by phase one, which has uh, three movies, a mini series, and one season of a TV show. Just something that simple, because especially for the TV show and the mini series, it's not that much of a daunting task, like what you mentioned. Of like, you know, you have to watch hours and hours of content just to understand a movie. Um, mm-hmm. And I kind of felt like also the way that I've done this, it's maybe a little bit of James Gunn's in- inspiration for what he's going to do for the uh, new DC. I don't know what we're going to call it. DC Universe. I think, I think they're just calling it because before it was the DCEU, which was the extended universe. Yeah. I think now they've just shortened it to the DCU. Okay. That's, that's a lot easier to go through. Yeah. So we're going to kick off this spooky, wonderful... Uh, because again, this is supposed to go parallel. This is all fantasy booking. Uh, we're not saying that this is what's going to happen. This is just pure speculative uh, fiction. Uh, but we are going to start with the actual film that is going to happen within phase six. Am I correct? That's when Blade was going to come out. But yeah, I believe so. Yes. So well, I mean, once it's out of development hell, of course. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Uh, 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 someone I saw on Twitter commented it's like you know what we'll sit there see Wesley Snipes play Blade again before we see Mahershala Ali play Blade um, mm-hmm. but uh, we, we have this idea of starting off one of the strongest supernatural characters that has for one been established to almost everyone who has been a fan of Marvel media uh, movie wise since like the 90s and we kind of know in the past Marvel media has not always been kind usually their animated series and some of their TV shows have been really good. But Mm -hmm. as for movies, we've really only had Howard the Duck. We've had a few Incredible Hulk made-for-TV movies, some Captain America serials and made-the-TV. So this one was, like, the one property no one knew, and that was Blade. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're only going by kind of what we know that's what's going to happen, but... We have a little synopsis here of what we think the Blade movie would be. Because, again, there's not really all that much details because they keep getting new writers and directors every quarter of the year. Um, Born half-human and half-vampire due to his mother being bitten while pregnant, the ruthless and determined vampire hunter Blade, played by Mahershala Ali, relentlessly hunts down his enemies, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. His latest target, an ancient vampire, Varney, uh, pushes Blade to his limits, revealing both his incredible skills as a vampire hunter and a darker side of his bloodlust that threatens to harm even his allies. As Blade narrowly defeats Varney, the audience is left to question whether he's a true hero or villain. Um, I really do feel like in our introduction of what these type of uh, characters are going to be, having a anti-hero where he could switch at a dime, be a villain like that, and, uh, you know, we, 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 his first film has to be killing vampires. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah, you know, th- that's yeah. what he is. And so I'm thinking, <laughs> if we do this, let's not go immediately with Dracula. Because I felt like that's, that's you know, that's like doing an Iron Man movie and then his very first villain's the Mandarin. It's like, mm-hmm. let's work our way up. Maybe not the Mole yeah. Man for a fight, but someone, you know. But um, with, with Varney being like an Atlantean vampire, like he was one of the very first of his kind. and He was, he was actually the first vampire. Oh, he was, yes. Yeah. So why not target the very first vampire and everything? Mm-hmm. And this is the guy that essentially, you know, bit uh, Vlad uh, Tempest, who would have become uh, Dracula, which I, I don't know how much of that is now actual modern day Marvel canon. Because I'm going by stuff that I remember reading from like the 70s point of view. So my history is a little And I, I did kind fuzzy. of. I did go to the. Uh one of the Marvel fandom pages mm-hmm. just to kind of brush up on some of this stuff. And it did t- say that Varney had uh, basically chosen Dracula as his successor. Oh. And so, yeah, so that, that was really interesting. Well, then, how we could sit there and definitely work something up that does tease. If we ever did do another Blade movie for this, it would have to be Dracula. It's like, Varney's mm-hmm. gone. Now it's my time to rise, finally, and everything. Um... But yeah, it's a very short, simple. It's bringing in Blade and letting us get to sit there and know the character. Though we already know him for an instance. Uh, but I think the one thing that the Wesley Snipes did not really capitalize on was uh, 
what happens if he does not take his medication? I think we okay, got our I, I think we got our tech shit done. All right, all right. Hello, hello. All right, we're back. We're back. <laughs> it was like only. Sorry about that. It, you're fine, mate. You're fine. You can't sit there and tell Mother Nature not to take out our power and everything. Um, so where, where where did we leave off at? In case if we do have to backtrack. Mm, we were talking about the Blade movie. Uh, we were talking about Varney. Uh, possibly leaving Dracula open for the next okay. go around. Okay. So, uh, uh, with that being said, uh, because I think you were out whenever I was mentioning Mia Goth and everything. Um, mm. So, in one of the castings that had came out uh, a few months ago, back when we thought that we were actually having something coming along uh, with this Blade movie, was that Mia Goth was cast as Lilith. But they only left it at that name. And so, most of us had come to assume, like, really? They're going to bring in the Mother of Demons this early in a Blade movie? Like, what? Mm -hmm. And so, I was thinking, well, what if she's not the villain of the film? But, mm -hmm. kind of like, uh, I'm trying to remember, was it the end of Avengers when they teased Thanos? Or was it a previous... I believe so. Yeah. I believe at the end of Avengers, I think Loki or somebody goes up to him like basically saying like i think it was loki was like i'm sorry i failed or something something along those lines or it was one of his minions and he i think that's when he was sitting on the throne yeah uh so essentially uh what we're doing here is that we're gonna use me a goth as um as the little mother of demons but with recent news that has came out and i've I'm still trying to find like a direct straight news source for where all this is coming from, but I did find on Twitter that the Lilith character that is being played is actually being played uh, is being the daughter of Dracula, which to me now that really makes sense. Ooh, what if they bring in Dracula, the big hunt, mm -hmm. and what if Blade kills this kid? Even though in the comics Dracula didn't care about her and everything, and yeah. and whenever he did grovel to her, it's like, I need you to turn me back into a vampire. It's like, no, father, you did this to me, so you'll suffer, and, you know, scratches his face in the most campiest way possible. And so, I feel like that's what the Blade movie's probably gonna go for, but um, our, our recasting for the remainder of Stream, uh, that I would think that would make a fine mother of demons to play Lilith, is none other than Eva Green. To have her in this post credit scene being awakened by one of her kids... Uh, mm -hmm. and like a tomb very much similar to the midnight suns video game so a lot of the story that we're also mixing is the 90s midnight suns run along with the midnight suns video game because i really liked how they handled those characters even though they didn't need a single avenger or any of that stuff they just needed more spooky characters uh in my opinion um but that would be our introduction to all of this is blade would be our stepping stone of we get to know who he is the vampire hunter he slays the first vampire um and then towards the end we get a thank you layla and towards the end uh we get um we get a tease of technically who's going to be the big bad in the supernatural realm of the marvel universe um and moving forward for that we will go to our first mini series in in this uh in this phase it's it's the only mini series in this phase but phase 2 we have another one uh it's werewolf by night uh krypton have you seen the marvel spotlight presents of... i have and it's probably one of my favorite things to come out of phase two or uh not sorry not phase two but phase like this four or like five? Po post well post post in game is yeah what I yeah mean. um it, it, it was a nice halloween treat and i yeah they had been talking like years of doing this because the first one it was supposed to be the native american version like a much more updated and so it was going to be Jack Russell. And I was like, ooh, that's cool. And then they were like, well, no, it's not him. And I was like, all right, well, who the fuck? Okay, we going back to Jack and everything? Mm -hmm. I love that one. Uh, it, yeah. do, you, do you have any history, knowledge of the Werewolf by Night character? Um, no, just apart from, like, reading up on Origins. So, essentially, he's just, like, became a werewolf, 18th birthday, um, due to his grandfather, I believe... Not grandfather. It, it was it was uh, ancestral, right? Could have been great grandfather, something like that. Yeah. But was was bitten by a werewolf. Um. But that curse was going to follow his his children, who were already born. 
So because they were already born, it like manifested differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so I think that's pretty much what I read up. Yeah, and uh, there is, I remember in the Tomb of Dracula, there's apparently a tease that shows that Jack Russell, which I think probably what you read was the re- rewrite con, but for the one that I knew, mm-hmm. um, it was Gre- Gregory Russell or something like that. Gregory, mm-hmm. what those fancy, fancy schmancy names. Uh, yeah. he, he ended up becoming like a, a thrall to Dracula, which now, if they ever did uh, a Dracula thing, Sam, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, raiders. Uh, if uh, if they yeah. ever did bring in Dracula, I would love to sit there and see uh, a Werewolf by Night and Blade team up and be like, yeah. you know what, we have our we have our beef with this vampire dude. And everything's like, what'd he do? I was like, he just exists. Well, what'd he do to you? I was like, well, he enslaved my ancestors. And it's like, and we were like, we were slaves to him. And it's like, that sounds like a far more personal, personal vendetta and everything. Yeah. But that's essentially what it is. Turns uh, uh, 18, becomes a werewolf. Uh, I have not read the entire run, but I did read the first issue, which is an astounding it feels like Marvel Horror, they start out so great, and then as the issues go through, it they get watered down because they don't have too many good horror stories uh, to keep that character super interesting. Uh, but I figured for this one, since we already kind of got to uh, get to know him from the spotlight, that, like, what if we did a six-episode series, like a six-part mm-hmm. miniseries, that will be a big homage, uh, homage to the Universal Monsters, much like the spotlight did, and so there may be a main villain, but probably in each episode, kind of like a X Files or whatever, he's fighting some other monster. He's either fighting yeah. mobs of people, or he's fighting some type of Frankenstein monster or a zombie or whatever. Um, but the synopsis that we have here is Jack Russell, played by is it is it Gail? I believe so. Gail G- Garcia. Gail Garcia. Up? Yes. Uh, which I think adds he's the first Latin superhero in the mcu um struggles to control his lycanthropic powers as he delves into his family history and embarks on a quest to obtain the dark hold a powerful and ancient artifact alongside allies elsa bloodstone and man thing jack faces dangerous foes and uncovers dark secrets about his past in this thrilling six-part miniseries i feel like this is probably definitely something that the uh mcu needs to just do period Instead of having TV shows, it's like, well, why don't you do miniseries? You can at least have them either 30 minutes to an hour. That's not too yeah. bad. It's a six-hour film or it's a three-hour movie. Um, but, yeah, like, Werewolf by Night, would you have it black and white or in color? Or both? I feel like it was really, really cool um, in the spotlight how it's black and white, but you have those splashes of color, especially with like, you know, you know what I mean. So towards I feel the, like sticking with the that end when Elsa's in the chair and she's holding the bloodstone, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, yep. kind of like almost like something from the Wizard of Oz and everything. And yeah. I and yeah, I, exactly wasn't. I believe I think they had some song by the Wizard of Oz playing during that and everything, or awesome. something, or it's something been, that it's been a sounded long time since I've... something that sounded like that. And it's mm-hmm. like it's like all of a sudden you just see all this red come through and all the colors just run right through I, I will i will say most likely after stream today i'm going to go back and watch it because now a, now you've got me wanting to rewatch. it's it a is, wonderful so. hour just to spend to yourself and everything it's just watching that Absolutely. welcome in jelly bean it's, it's watching that and it's like it's this huge homage to the 30s and 40s universal horror classics so i figured with a mini series like this it has to continue that and everything yeah, and absolutely. you could still do like Oh my god, it's mostly in black and white. I was like, yes, but there's moments maybe where like, maybe there's a lot of red, you know. Mm. It's like maybe if the werewolf does like go unleash, it's like it just heightens up the drama and the realism of like, holy shit, this dude is fucking up this mob of people, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, watching him uh, like fuck up the TVA uh, that that was there. I'm like, oh shit, like. He, I think he shoved a hand through one of them. He ripped one dude's arm off and he tore his throat out. It's like, let's let's see more of that. It's like, I maybe yeah. don't need to see him gnaw on a guy's head. That's maybe taking it a little too far. But, like, <laughs> let the werewolf come out and mm-hmm. let's see some, like, really good 
uh, prosthetics. Let's see some shit that is like from the Howling and American Werewolf in London as well to mix in with yeah. that to give you that nice monster movie. Um, Absolutely. And so, and then I figured, you know what? It's like Elsa Bloodstone's a monster hunter, but she's friends mm-hmm. with two monsters. I would think that that would make for a really good uh, hot take uh, on that. Yeah. And uh, and you don't have to have the man thing on there all the time. Um, yeah. Exactly. You know, like like he could definitely be your um uh what's the term uh like your MacGuffin or no 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 not your MacGuffin like a, a... your Deus Ex Machina it's like oh my god there's this giant monster that's fucking up the werewolf what is he gonna do <laughs> and everything and then I don't know Elsa blows a whistle and calls in the man thing and it just comes yeah. up and just kills it <laughs> and like that's like their ultimate weapon it's like yeah it's like you know we're getting our asses beat what are we gonna do uh, let's just call on the man thing and you know even if you can't burn it that's like watching a mini kaiju battle you know yeah. like having something fight that i would love that um what are you what, what, what is your take to go straight from movie to mini series um going from movie to mini series i think i i like it um I, I'm kind of curious if we should, if there should be a couple of movies before a miniseries. Okay. But, but I, I mean, I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with it. Yeah. Like it could take place like in a different time of the story. And and I think the only reason I think that is because of the way it, we have it set up right now. We have movie miniseries and then I don't want to get into the next thing, you know, until yeah. you announce it, but, but the structure of what we have it, we could probably go back and restructure and mix it all up mm-hmm. and everything. But um, but yeah, Werewolf by Night is our second installment of this MCU Phase 1 Midnight Suns. Uh, we are introduced to a lot more characters. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, too, throwing it back to Blade, I don't know if I really want to go ahead and start introducing Hannibal King and, and uh, Nathan Drake and everything but um mm-hmm. those characters will be popping up here in our fantasy thing uh is it frank or is it frank drake yeah frank drake is the descendant of dracula dracula okay yeah Got you. and uh i would really like 90s frank drake because he has the mm-hmm. the bio exorcist gun that he calls linda blair and there's a funny line if you go read the original night stalkers issue whenever he mm-hmm. goes and grabs it and he's like i'm gonna name it linda and everything and even blade's like that's not healthy and it's like <laughs> it's like that that would make for such this is coming a, from a, a funny moment right especially with with uh what we'll mention later it's like if we had that m- moment in there it would definitely bring up some interesting comedy dynamic mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. then of course hannibal king is brought in uh as like he's like a victim of deacon frost and he is like a vampire detective and so uh mm-hmm. We'll jump into that one a little bit later, but what we're going to move up to is a show that's already been, again, pre-established, much like Werewolf by Night. It's already established in the MCU, thanks to the Marvel Spotlight. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I prefer you go watch the black and white, the the very first one that came out, the black and white. The color one is pretty, but I prefer it in black and white because if you want the, if you want all the emotion that what the, um of what the soundtrack from the film's director and uh, composer it it fits it so well i saw the color the music still kind of fits it but it it's all better with black and white that's my personal opinion but uh we're bringing in mark specter's moon knight for a second season which i've already now heard that they're supposedly pushing now for a second season that should have been already i hope so that i I don't understand why that was even a question moon knight was one of my favorite shows to come out post in game and it's just i it the, wasn't the nearly suspense. as violent as, like, say, Werewolf by Night, but it still kept mm-hmm. the action. It was it was like watching The Mummy, but in a modern-day context. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, but uh, what, what were your thoughts on season one? Where were your yays and nays about Mark Spector, Oscar Isaacs, maybe the film, uh, the, the series villain? Um, Oscar Isaac did an incredible job. Uh, I think... I also think Ethan is it Ethan Hawke mm-hmm. that was main villain. Um, I think I think he was incredible as well. I just 
overall, I don't know if I have really any gripes. I might have to go back and rewatch it to like in, in you know with that lens on mm-hmm. um, to try to point out what I didn't like about it. But uh, something to know about me is I'm also like not a heavy critic when it comes to these things. If I go in and I'm entertained, then I'm you know I'm happy. So I but I I will say like reflecting on everything post end game it's definitely top tier for me oh yeah so yeah it definitely feels like some of their tv shows at the beginning were really top tier and then they kind of we're really hoping that maybe daredevil can break that stigma i liked echo yeah. but i feel like echo could have been a movie mm-hmm. like like that could have been like... that could have been a marvel spotlight right there mm-hmm. 60 minutes that's all i you feel needed. like the ones that the ones that stuck out to me the most where I was just craving the next episode week after week were for sure WandaVision mm-hmm. and Moon Knight. Those are the two that just I I wanted more. Same thing for, for Moon Knight. I really wanted more. For one, I really want to know more of the villain. I didn't really feel like... Mm-hmm. like Ethan Hawke pulls a great performance, but it's like... I just feel like he played Jim Jones. That's all that he mm-hmm. did and everything and... Uh, and then they teased us at the very end of the season uh, with what's his name? Jake uh, Lockley. Jake. Jake. Yeah. So they teased us with that, and then we're not sure if we're getting the second season. I, I was I was really upset. So. And uh, Konshu is voiced by Gimli from Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. That, that that was another one. It's like this is so weird to see him do a Marvel movie, but like it's like uh, as old as he is, he can't really act it, act it you know like on set so mm-hmm. i was like it was nice he got like a voice thing i really did enjoy Konshu, and i enjoyed a yeah. lot of banter of the gods where they're like yeah like Konshu is a bit of a dick <laughs> and it's like <laughs> that's kind of why we banished him you know uh yeah but but you're now his his avatar and his agent his moon knight which mm-hmm. again whenever we get introduced to like his character and him fighting the jackals and everything that's amazing the CGI yeah. does not look nearly as bad as maybe some people are like, oh, that was terrible. It's like, I've seen worse. Like, you know, have you seen The Flash? It's pretty, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty terrible. Did it's you like, see uh, Thor Love and Thunder in certain scenes? <laughs> yeah. Let's not talk about yeah. Love and Thunder. I had so much high hopes for that. I did too. Um, I won't get too much into it, but Gore the God Butcher is something that I was so excited to see on screen because it's such a good... Uh, run and, and they butchered and, him. Yeah, they de- they denutted that man. I like what everything. you did there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but for Moon Knight season two, we have Moon Knight is more settled into his role and personalities faces a new darker threat. A series of brutal rit- ritualistic murders in New York City catches his attention. Uh, each seemingly connected to ancient Egyptian mythology. As Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, and Jake Lockley delve deeper, they uncover a sinister cult. Aim to resurrect an ancient malevolent deity. So I kind of removed some of the villains in here when I originally wrote this, but my idea was mm-hmm. we were not going to, I was not going to bring in Bushmen, but I was going to bring in Mark's brother who would be known as the Shadow Ooh. Knight. Shadow Knight. That was, but, um, is what's his first name? It's not Steven, right? It's, uh, I forget what his brother's name Randall. was. Randall. Yeah, Randall, Randall Specter, mm-hmm. and everything. But in this one, kind of like almost like how uh, the Punisher, you didn't really have um, Jigsaw at first. It was Billy Loomis, and everything mm-hmm. as what his name is. This one, it was going to be Randall Specter, or he was going to go by some different name, and mm-hmm. then he would come into the mantle of I am the Shadow Knight. Uh, so yeah, it would completely already establish it. Uh, though we may get Bushman as a real second season antagonist, I feel like making Mark Spe- Mark Spector's brother uh, Randall be, you know, and I, to me, I think like we didn't get a very personal villain in season one, so I really mm-hmm. feel like you know what, if we're definitely going to keep people invested in these characters, we need to start having some really personal, personal yeah. things. And I kind of figured, you know, what with Blade, maybe if we did throw in Mia Goth's uh, Lilith in that one and she happened to get slain it's still a personal vendetta because now it's like Dracula's gonna be on your ass but Blade's like bring it you know I, mm-hmm. I'm I'm waiting on you you know I, I want yeah. you and everything and so I don't know how many episodes do you think that this Moon Knight because I think they did 10 8 or 10 for I season 1 I think it was one? 8 you could be right with 10 but I want. I feel like it was 8 
Um, I think that's a good. Uh, I, I think that's a good place to to put it. Um, I also really like throwing in like I, I, this would be what the third project mm -hmm. in phase one, and it's, it w adding in a cult, an, you know, an occultist aspect of yeah. this uh, into the phase. I feel like that's a good place to to start doing something like that. Maybe start adding some other people from the MCU that they're probably maybe like a supporting role and everything. Mm -hmm. um, like maybe uh, Brother Voodoo along the lines mm -hmm. and everything or just like just someone that's from the MCU that is very knowledgeable in the occultism. Um, mm -hmm. And you can already start teasing uh, maybe one of these... Uh, Maybe one of these cultists that is uh, helping out in uh, this ritualistic killings to please, or maybe try to revive a, a dead god, uh, is maybe one of Lilith's children. Because mm -hmm. Lilith may have just been awoken, but her children have been walking the earth for quite some time. And they've had the and high. Not, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, but what you could also do is kind of tie it in to maybe some of the cult members could possibly be like the parents of nico there you go for instance and that that could be a way to introduce nico yeah and everything because we don't know yet if the runaways is canon but we do mm -hmm. have when we start reaching the apex of phase one uh that we would be bringing in maybe a particular sister grim character mm -hmm. as like an apprentice um uh for for these new heroes but uh moon knight season two eight to ten episodes maybe randall yeah. specter coming around and it's like hello brother and you know mm -hmm. it's like you got a god i got a god it's like you know maybe let's get another kaiju fight scene because i i love that in the first moon knight mm -hmm. thing where, where you got that yeah. little bit I, I, sam yeah um i also think that because at least uh in the origins that i kind of read on and studied up on um both I don't think that they did anything like this in the season one series because it's a little foggy right now. Um, in the comic uh, storyline, I know that in the with Mark Spector's origin as Moon Knight, both his brother Randall and Bushman were there. Oh, and so really? They were, yeah. And so, as far as what I was reading, and so they were both there at the time. I think that if I'm not mistaken randall his brother kind of turned on him at one point and even if you don't tie it directly with the origin you can have both of them have some kind of like personal um you know spot in his past and so bring bringing bushman in as the main antagonist that like a surprise antagonist i think that would be that would be perfect yeah i mean also too like with how fractured that mark specter's psyche and memory is Mm -hmm. uh, seeing what we saw from his backstory and how like he kind of remembered things a little bit differently and then at the end it's like no this is actually what really happened like this right here it would be nice that randall kind of feels like that one younger brother that it's like you always cut me out of everything you know and it still goes okay. back to that origin and it's like yeah like when you did what you did mark and you left you left your brother behind and everything and mm -hmm. maybe your brother was also abused too you know it's probably the reason this whole family's all fucked up you know um yeah. and uh and so it would yeah it would definitely sit there and add to um you know it's like i'm getting back at this because you left me with an abuser you abandoned your own brother and um and i made friends elsewhere that will treat me like better family and everything but that kind of feels like the whiny brother syndrome you know yeah so they're, they're gonna have to add a little bit something like yeah maybe they'll probably reveal maybe back when he actually really did die of like mm -hmm. yeah randall was there and betrayed him you know or maybe he could have just been that brother that's like all you had to do was listen to what the boss said mm -hmm. but you had to play hero you just had to yeah. do that and you know and comes Bushman. And then, yeah, you can have Bushman be like, yeah, your fucking brother knows how to take orders. But you can't. <laughs> it's like, you know how to take a bullet, though. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that's something, you know. Um, yeah, I would definitely love that. I especially, love especially like, you know, instead of just having Bushman as, like, your traditional Punisher-esque kind of villain. Because that's kind of what he is. It's like, yeah, yeah, you could definitely have him as, like, that grand manipulator of not only will he kick your ass, but 
He'll make your little brother kick your ass, too. Like, you know. Yeah. I feel like to make him original, there has to be some kind of element added. Because in my mind, Bushman is just basically another Crossbones from yep. the MCU. Yeah. That's exactly who I'm thinking of. When I, I think, think he's of far more vicious, so. though. Like, I mean, the man. Uh, didn't he. He didn't get his face cut off. Moon Knight did that to him. But didn't he also do that to someone else? Didn't he fillet someone's face at one point? I want to sit there and say I think he did Possibly. something like that. Like, you know, like to make them look like him or whatever. Or I think he made his his new soldiers like do that. Like they had to have some mm-hmm. form of like an actual like facial scar. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, there's like a lot that they got to work out to the point that they don't make them seem like jigsaw but they also don't make him seem like crossbones but in actuality yeah. he's almost because like i think in the comics he yeah because i think even in the comics like he even tattoos like a skull to his face yeah and so which is even a little bit more confusing with crossbones right so i mean so yeah <laughs> at this point and everything that's when Mo- moon knight is much of a smart as he is is like Hey, buddy, I, I knew a guy that did that, but he did it to his chest. It's like, I think you're a uh-huh. copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, Burnthal shows up. He's like, oh, what the hell is that shit on your face? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we're going to move from the TV show to our next movie because we're going to close out phase one with two movies. Uh, mm-hmm. We're bringing in the uh, Spirit of Vengeance. We're bringing in the Ghost Rider. Uh, but it's not Johnny Blaze and it's not Danny Ketch. Uh, we're going to bring in someone uh, that was introduced in uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I really want to have it more closely related to the comics of Robbie Reyes uh, and his relationship with his serial killer, cannibalistic hitman uncle. I, I really wonder how that man's LinkedIn page really looks like, you know, when it comes to looking for a gig. But Robbie Reyes, a young man from Los Angeles, is possessed by the spirit of vengeance and becomes a ghost rider. He must use his newfound powers to defend his home and younger brother from the dangerous 5th Street Locos gang, while also confronting his satanic serial killer uncle Eli Eli Morrow, who seeks to use Robbie's powers for his own sinister purpose. Um, While already introduced into the MCU through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we can reboot the character after the multiverse saga and start brand new with a new actor to take on the role of Robbie Reyes. Because I definitely feel like, I feel like Gabriel Luna is kind of out, like, aged this character. This character is supposed to be, like, mm-hmm. 17-ish. He's very, Pretty very young, young yeah. and everything. And I love Gabriel Luna's take on it. But, like, also, too, I would like a Ghost Rider film where, you know, it's not just a demon you're dealing with. You're dealing with toxic family member that mm-hmm. pushed your mother down the stairs while pregnant with baby brother. And that's why baby brother's the way he is. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I I feel like this is something that where you can get the horror, you can get the action. That what I feel like a lot of people of Marvel movies of I want to see some really good action. Why not yeah. just unleash the Ghost Rider into L.A.? Why not? You know, get rid mm-hmm. of the bike, give him the charger. Which I was hesitant at first, but when I mm-hmm. started reading those comics when they were coming out, I love the charger. It's it's pretty cool. The chains coming out of the trunk. Uh, the Hellfire, mm-hmm. everything. He's one of my favorite characters to play in the Marvel Sons and the Midnight Suns Same. video game. Same. Um, it took me a while to learn that when you use the Hell Charger, though, it wipes out all your cards. And I was like, mm-hmm. I had more turns than that. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Okay, I just learned this skill. And it was like, I better mm-hmm. not use that too much. Um, but what are your what thoughts? What I love about. Oh, I'm oh, oh, sorry. Uh, so, what I love about going with the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider is like, that leaves it open to cameos from the previous iterations. Um, if you go with just your Johnny Blaze, like you don't have that option. You had right? two movies of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I, I, full disclosure, I never saw Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I've never seen, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> you, you dodged a bullet. That's all I'm going to say. You dodged a bullet. Yeah. I, I believe it I, from what I've heard. But uh, I, I mean, I've seen clips. I've seen, um, you know, little things here and there. But I so I don't really have a whole lot of experience watching Gabriel Luna in that role. Um, but do you have any ideas on who you would want to cast if not Gabriel Luna? 
I have no damn clue. Like, you would have to cast a very young and up-and-coming Latin actor. Like, because I don't think Gail, Gail Garcia was young when he got the Jack Russell, because I think he's, like, in his early, mid-30s or so. So, mm-hmm. I actually believe just pluck someone that if... Get an unknown. It, 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 yeah, pluck someone that is actually from either, either the area... That you know, it, it, that person knows that area. He, they can do the dialect. They can, they feel like they can definitely encompass the culture that is like you know L.A. and um, um, uh, like a, a South Cali and everything. I feel like you're gonna need that. If, if not, if you go just straight Latin base, I would sit there say just sit there and just scour all of Mexico's like you know uh, a- actors and everything, young and up and coming actors and see which one could do that because i definitely feel for this character they are definitely gonna have to sit there and play the burden of they're gonna have to hold the burden of you are the big brother the provider and the savior but yet like you have this entity inside you that wants to kind of pass itself onto your brother and cause more harm there you know it's um so that's definitely a lot coming from like a very young actor I don't really sit there mm-hmm. see too much. You, you can't cast Timothy Chalamet in this. I'm sorry, he's even too fucking old. Uh, I know he's <laughs> like the the heartthrob. I think so currently, uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, this has to be another unknown. It's the same thing yeah. with uh, with like a few characters of, of what we're gonna go here with like you know either recastings or whatever. You have to go with an unknown because I feel like especially in today's day, if you cast like say The Rock. The Rock's not going to play that character. The Rock is going to play The Rock. The Rock. You know. Vin <laughs> yeah. Diesel is going to play Vin Diesel. Except for mm-hmm. Groot. Because that one's the only one where I it feels like... I was going to say, like, the only time I've ever seen him not play Vin Diesel and, is when Vin Diesel's face is not on the screen. <laughs> or, well, you know what? He also... But this was very early in his career when he did Saving Private Ryan. It did not feel okay, like he was yeah. playing Dom Toretto mm-hmm. or anything. Like yeah. It actually felt like he was just playing a soldier and everything even though it was small screen time and most of the time it was him screaming on the battlefield while he was getting sniped it's like Mm -hmm. shit you know but yeah i i feel like definitely for uh, for um for the supernatural side of the mcu those that are not already pre-established characters you need to hire unknowns i feel like this is going to be the perfect kind of like what they did with the miss marvel they hired an unknown that was her first acting gig you know and Mm -hmm. she knocked it out of the park and I mean, like, Absolutely. It, it felt like she was such a huge fan of that character. So I definitely feel like you got to find someone like that for Rock. She really does embody Mar- <laughs> Miss Marvel. Like, yeah, just even her personality off screen. Right. It's so. it's like pure fandom, pure, mm-hmm. like that good heart and everything. And and not only is like the person not uh, for, for going back to Ghost Rider, that person, the actor that they get. Uh, it's like having to hold that burden, that weight of technically how much power he has and how much that could actually hurt his loved ones. But like, he also mm-hmm. still needs to be that very laid back, just chilled, you know, kind of guy. Cause that's exactly what Robbie is like. Yeah. Robbie had like, I guess you could say Robbie is like the, the West side, Peter Parker. Like he has his own quirks and his own nervous, you know, ticks and everything, but Robbie's pretty chill. You know, and yeah. I think the video game got him down pretty well. It's like, yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the world is coming to an end and he's just over here playing fucking video games. And it's like, you, <laughs> you need someone that that's fun, but also too, like he is like, kind of like in the video game where it's like, I want to find my purpose on the team. And I definitely feel yeah. like for him, his purpose right now is to protect Gabe, his brother. But when we start mm-hmm. bringing him into the Midnight Suns, he definitely has to have that character arc of well, what's my purpose of the team blades obviously the leader mm-hmm. mark is the unhinged fucking teammate that we just don't know who's gonna come out like i could be talking yeah. to to that's gonna make for so many good interactions oh yeah like i just that that i i just want if people to think the so deadpool much. and wolverine movie were like good with the dialogue thing imagine mm-hmm. mark like just switching a personality and it's like, all right, mm-hmm. Moon Knight, we're going to need you. And then all of a sudden, it's Mr. Moon Knight or whatever, or Mr. Moon yeah. comes out. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm ready. And it's like, I didn't ask you. I asked for the Moon Knight. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. I can do this job, though, man. 
and it's like, ah, oh, shit. And it's like, new plan, <laughs> you know. Or if it's yeah. Jake, does is this going back to the Moon Knight thing, and how brutal is it going to be? Because at the end, he fucking killed the villain, cold-blooded. Mm-hmm. They, they kind of, I think, rewrote Jake Lockley being a taxi driver, and he's a hitman. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's that, or, like, is he just going to change and look like a a Scorsese character from a mob film? And it's like, mm-hmm. you got to fight Lilith, and he pulls out a little small, you know, 9 millimeter with a with a silencer. He's like, I got her. And it's like, it's a Disney <laughs> movie, man. Put it away. You know, like... <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, introducing Eli Morrow, maybe having the Fifth Street Locos gang get demonically possessed. Like, maybe at first they're Ooh. just, nor- like, they're normal kind of people and you kind of bring in like the hide stuff but like Mm -hmm. maybe it's more demonic and so it's like you're watching kind of similar to that harlem fight in the incredible hulk where it's Mm -hmm. it was Mm -hmm. abomination for imagine ghost rider fighting five or so fucking roided up demonic you know uh gang members it's like you know it 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 leaves a lot for one it leaves a lot for animation uh but you know i think that that would be a pretty damn cool visual and if they have a story in which yeah like robbie cannot be the selfish brother he has to take care but now he has his other struggle and it gets hungry at night and he has to leave his brother in the safety to go do this it's going to bring the the drama and the conflict back home so how are you going to do that that's what the comics were i fucking love it I didn't like too much of what they did afterwards. I still don't know exactly what happened to Eli Morrow, but, like, the video game had it where Eli was not in him, but there was another spirit of vengeance called Sparky. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like sooner or later in Robbie's lifetime, you're going to have to purge Eli out, and you're going to have to have some other spirit of vengeance within him um, uh, that uh, gets uh, put in. But do you have any final thoughts before we we talk about our closing film for phase one no i I think you covered everything really well all right so uh the original concept that we were also doing for our midnight suns film was there was going to be two midnight suns movies i kind of wanted it to be a little bit like endgame and infinity war but i was like you know what i don't think having two back to back would work so go back to phase one and see what they did in the mcu Mm -hmm. and just give us a midnight suns one but we're still going to fight Lilith because she's practically going to be the main reason why all these guys, she's the first big major threat. And she's technically, she's like a Thanos level threat for the Midnight Suns. She's definitely sure. a Thanos threat. So the synopsis is as Lilith, the mother of demons, seeks revenge on humankind. The Midnight Suns are formed to stop her and her Lilith army from using the dark hold to plunge the world into darkness. Uh, taking from the conclusion of Infinity Saga... Uh, as well as the Avengers film, the Midnight Suns will book in each phase. So you kind of know what's going to be the the book in for this. Um, what do you think about this? Uh, we were already kind of talking a little bit about the the uh, the different um, characters that are going to be formed in the Midnight Suns. Because at this moment, we have Blade, Moon Knight, which we may also add Scar- the Scarlet Scarab. I think that's what Layla's character character was. I don't know if we'll add her in this mm-hmm. or not, or she'll just be supporting. But you have Werewolf by Night, Elsa Bloodstone, the Man Thing, mm-hmm. that's our Hulk. And then you got Robbie Reyes as Ghost Rider. Um, did I already mention Moon Knight? Yeah, I think I did. I think so. So we got about six or seven characters here. Mm-hmm. We'll probably introduce Caretaker. Which do you like better? Do you like the Carter Slade Caretaker from the first Ghost Rider movie? Or do you like the Caretaker that they did from the video game with the uh, the blood I'm trying to remember the the caretaker from the video game i i don't remember she was like always a cold-hearted blonde and she always had her arms crossed you know oh and everyone's I like no i mean everyone's all like she's got such a stick up her ass the the book i don't know I, the I, book explains uh-huh. why she is the way she is and i really wish the video game that's my only gripe with the video game i really wish mm-hmm. that you got past that is like she's not a bitch to be a bitch she is torn yeah. because every single decision she makes could kill these kids and blame yeah. you know um so i think i think having seen um the sam elliott caretaker i think it would be it would be cool to like if you know add that that you know 
what you were just talking about from the prequel book to this new care, caretaker, like add a little bit more of that three dimensional. So do like know, an amalgamation, I guess, like an amalgamation. Like, Possibly, it could be played I, by um, any gender, but just give that yeah. that complex character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and we'll probably introduce Nika Minoru probably in this film. She'll probably be like mm-hmm. an understudy, and everything. It's like she's like you know. And you could definitely play off from what the Midnight Suns video game did, where she's like, you know, I can do this. I can, you know, I can fight with the team or, or be a part of the team. And Caretaker is all like, uh, you, you need a, I, I, I don't know. I still got Sam Elliott stuck in my brain. It's like, you need to pump the brakes there, little darling. It's, it's like, it's like, that's what it feels like he would, he would say and everything. It, it's like, we just can't have you go out there. It's like the team we're putting together came and get along, you know? Mm-hmm. Blade just wants to go by himself, you know. Um, maybe there's also a bit of an issue between Mark Spector and uh, the werewolf by night, where maybe the werewolf actually remembers him. He's like, yeah, I remember you tried to kill me one time. And Mark's like, I don't remember. <laughs> and it's like, and maybe Jake's like, I do. And like, so there you go. There's some conflict <laughs> yeah. right there, you know. Nice. And uh, And then, of course, you know, werewolf can easily be like i got my man thing and he's like i got a man thing for you too and it's like you know you can add a little bit of adult humor in there and i don't yeah yeah i don't think some of the kids would get it and uh and then yeah just like have like a big like you'll have a reason to just have like a big all-out brawl like bring in a few of lilith's children and her own Mm -hmm. thing is that she plans on just bringing them in from some other realm that maybe they were banished from you know Mm -hmm. it's like I, i i want my children to exist her her original thesis isn't too much of I just want to kill humanity, but it's more of the I want my children back kind of mm-hmm. thing. And and then of course you know oh well they killed a few of hers. Well now humanity's got to suffer because the Midnight Suns came and killed some of my kids. And you know it, it's yeah. that mother protection. So you kind of get like I guess a little bit of Wanda from Multiverse of Madness mm-hmm. ish. Mm-hmm. And it's like an understand. It's like I understand why she's doing what she's doing. It's still pretty bad, but yeah. like, you know, at the end, it's like you do kind of care for her, and I definitely feel like we should make her not just a villain that is just like I am this dark gothic looking mommy, you know, for the internet mm-hmm. people to love, you know. Especially if yeah. we're gonna have Eva Green do this, it's like we definitely need to humanize. Of like, well, was she always like this? Was she human? Like how the video game was, you know. Mm-hmm. It's uh, what. What are your thoughts on? book ending this with the midnight suns uh, is there anything that you would like to have seen um i think no i mean giving her some kind of motive i feel like is is smart um humanizing her like you said uh but sorry i'm just kind of playing this out you're good um yeah no i think this this works and i i feel like having that motivation of i just want my like i want my babies back i want that that could be like the first phase like she doesn't you don't know what her plans are post that but like this is the first phase of her plan which fits perfectly in the phase one of the of this you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so and also too we could add throughout most of these series that there is possibly a uh um some other cutscenes outside of just the blade one like maybe in mm-hmm. Werewolf by Night and everything, um, maybe it's kind of like an Indiana Jones adventure added to along with the Universal Horror, and maybe the place that they think where the Darkhold is at, you know, uh, the Darkhold is gone, or whoever they're chasing is probably a teleporter, and the moment that you know we think, oh my God, we're gonna get to the book, we're gonna get it, you know, I'm gonna maybe figure out, maybe I can cure myself of this, maybe I don't have to be like this. But maybe when they open up that one area, they see something like flicker away, and they're like, what the fuck was that? And then that could be somewhere in the middle of the series, and then you cut to the post credit scene of, hey, it's going back to that scene, and it flickers, and it's Pilgrim, who in the comics is one of Lilith's children, and is the one that, that came to uh, awaken her. Um, but um, he has teleported, he has found the dark hold, and he has given it to his mother. And she's like, soon your brothers and sisters will be with us again. Mm-hmm. And then bam, that already gives the reason. Oh, she's come back. She's going to bring her children. Sprinkle that in between. You know, mm-hmm. you may not probably need it for everyone because, again, like, I think. 
I think what there was like a post credit every now and then that actually went towards the Avengers stuff and the Infinity yeah. Saga as a whole because the end of Iron Man I think was no the end of Iron Man two was Nick Fury showing up with mm-hmm. the Avengers initiative Wait. right no that was that was Iron Man one that was Iron Man one mm-hmm. okay um. So you had that because I know Iron Man two was part of Be, Phase one. Because right, right after Iron Man one, if I'm not mistaken, was Incredible Hulk. Okay. With, uh, Edward Edward Norton, and then at, at the that post credit right, scene, Nick uh, Tony Stark shows up to talk to uh, gen- the General um, what's his name General Thaddeus. Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. 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 So because Nick Fury had already come to him. Yeah. So. And everything and. Uh, so yeah, you you would have to like spread it apart of like, I w- I don't want to have post credit scenes for everything, even though I know most of us look forward to these, but you mm-hmm. can also have like a post credit scene that either may tease to like another season of something, or tease just as something well, of, of, I also, of, of, of a development. I also don't know how you feel about this, and you can tell me if you if you don't think it would work, but we could also see like a second post uh, credits teaser or a scene teasing the return of Scarlet Witch. There you go. To to bring back into the MCU to to play into all of this. Yeah, yeah. Even though I feel like she's gonna come back for mul- uh, for not multiverse of madness. That was already then. Uh, the multiverse uh, saga. What what is it? Is it Secret Wars? That's the first uh, one. To Secret come? Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have. Uh, well, no, I think the first one's gonna be uh, Doomsday. And that, then the there you go. That's what it was. Wars. Doomsday and mm-hmm. everything. Because that's right. It was supposed to be King Dynasty, then Secret Wars, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But also, too, there's been talks. Apparently, there's going to be a Vision TV show, and that she may also yeah, pop in I've on seen that. that uh, so I don't know where does that land canonically, storyline wise. Mm-hmm. Of is this before the multiverse stuff, or is this after the multiverse of madness? You know, and but, even if it doesn't tease her return, just her involvement in general. Yeah. So. You know, so I would definitely love that because that one would definitely sit there and go into our our closing if if we had her in it. Uh, cause I, I kind of had, I had a kind of like a replacement or something like that or, yeah. or is because they're already doing a series. You could bring in Agatha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you, you would have to bring in almost as we probably get closer to here and the bigger, the threat builds up because we would probably mm-hmm. sit there and say at the end of midnight suns, Lilith is defeated, but she runs away. Most of her children are all gone. And the midnight suns have now targeted themselves as persona non gran you know they are they are gonna die from this woman this woman's like you killed my children uh there is no way i am going to give mankind any mercy now towards and that that could easily spin off and you could easily have now a post credit scene of there is a woman pregnant and you're like okay what is this and you could hear someone sit there and say you know uh you know uh you know uh like uh like how long has she been under and it's like miss montezzi has been under now for about a few days or so mm-hmm. and everything mm-hmm. and bam that'll tease of like okay well what's that supposed to mean and then that'll go in as we were talking about before going live of maybe if we retold this final film that you know it adds another layer of kathan because that's exactly mm-hmm. uh what we're going to go into but overall on the thought phase one what do you think about this i think it's solid i think that maybe the only thing that i would say is maybe reworking it so you don't have um movie miniseries yeah. series and like throw like maybe alternate movies or something probably something just like sit that. there and switch out moon knight and go strider's placement mm-hmm. so you had a movie yeah. miniseries yeah, movie works. show you know though that, that would make mm-hmm. people have to wait even longer they're like we have to wait until october 2026 i was just throwing place dates on this it's like we'd have to wait October because 26 the, the only reason night. I think the only reason I think that is just like theatrical releases are just so far apart yeah and so that's yeah yeah uh, that, that's fair that is fair uh, so phase two is gonna be our Cathan awakening and with some of this stuff being like sequels and everything I wanted to change it up so that they're not just the same old same old because the one thing that I've like noticed with like a lot of people is um, there's not enough uh, evolution in the sequels sometimes it just uh well it just feels like this usual superhero typical action thing you know it's 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 the same process there's nothing added to it and so we started seeing uh genre mashes mashups uh with this and so uh to kick off our phase two 
it's not a Blade movie per se, but it's a Night Stalkers. So it's a subgroup within the Midnight Suns. Um, I could have swore I thought that the um, that the actual company, the uh, the uh, the private investigation, I think it was called Bloodlines Incorporated, or something like that. I, I think so. Yeah. Well, I think I labeled it only as like Night Stalkers Incorporated, which I think Bloodlines probably works a little bit more. But the synopsis of this is Blade, Hannibal King, and Frank Drake form the Night Stalkers to combat the rising tide of vampire activity orchestrated by the cunning Deacon Frost and the ancient vampire Lord Dracula. As they delve into the dark underworld of vampire politics and ancient rivalries, the Night Stalkers face their past with two powerful vampires. And my added note to this is, instead of this just being a horror action film, it's a horror noir uh, that will change up what's already been done with Blade uh, as an action horror film thing. So we have something where it's like, oh, maybe we have discovered a sudden rise. They investigate it. And the thing is that you have Hannibal King that can easily go in as a vampire. Maybe not everyone knows that he works for the good guys and that maybe he could mm -hmm. easily be like an agent. But it's like Hannibal King could be their mole. And Frank could be their tech guy of like, I know how to kill these fuckers from Kingdom Come with all the new tech and blades mm -hmm. like uh, sometimes it's just better with a wooden stake and a fucking katana so you can mm -hmm. have that weird banter of it's kind of like um kind of like in the in the marvel's midnight suns video game where dr strange and tony stark were arguing where stark is always about new upgrade technology you know we just need better tech to defeat them where strange is like well well sometimes the old ways work just as well and mm -hmm. it doesn't take nearly as long to build and everything and so you could have some type of weird buddying chinatown the big sleep i think it would be weird to kind of add dracula into this but i think you know what it kind of works if you kind of work dracula in the vein of like he is now the head of the vampire council or whatever yeah. you know and you could i mean you could tease him or or show him in some aspect at the end of the first blade movie since we're yeah. doing varney and so then, then he's not a completely new character that you're adding in yeah. uh, you Night could, Soldiers. You and can I, add Deacon Frost in there and sit there and say Varney's been slain by, by the Daywalker, and then Blade, mm -hmm. and then all you all you sit there and see is just Dracula's fingers on an armchair and he just sits up, and everything, and it's like, great or something like that. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. I, I'm not the writer and, and, for and them. What do you think about having Deacon Frost just like? Um basically uh, uh taking orders from dracula well that's kind of what he was in the uh oh in, in the um uh the tomb of dracula thing because it was mm -hmm. like when dracula was injured i think deacon frost kind of allied him but like deacon was more mm -hmm. of the like you're on your fucking own dude like i got yeah, I, yeah. I got my own shit to do i have my own stuff right here but like i kind of felt mm -hmm. like for this if we made deacon like serve him but not feel like so much of like oh yes i I am pleased to serve Lord Dracula. You can easily have it where it's like the, yeah, Dracula, like, keep keep yourself busy. I'm going to work my way up to, like, stake you, kill you, and have it where it's more of the, I want the title of yeah. Lord of Darkness or, or Lord Vampire, you know. And it's more or less as Dracula is more of the, like, it's a title. You know, I, I have mm -hmm. a job that I need to do. And it kind of does add, it adds to, I think, a little bit more of the personal dynamics of why the Night Stalkers would work together. Because Hannibal King was bitten by Deacon Frost, if I remember right. Blade, mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. his mother, was bitten by Deacon Frost. That's why the way he mm -hmm. is. So that's their personal stake. So For Nathan, exactly. it's all like, it's not every day you wake up to kill your great, 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 great fucking, gr like, I think, great uncle or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, it's like it's not every day that you so do that. So both villains, there's a personal, um, like you said, stake for at least one of the three. And you can also so. add in some backstory too for Nathan that where, um, uh, I'm sorry, Layla, <laughs> I did that because a lot of you guys were trying to drown me. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, Layla. It's for you. Krypton will hydrate. There you go. Um, but yeah, like I kind of figured that for. Uh, for this and everything, it's well. Maybe Dracula did kill maybe Frank Drake's lover, which was Rachel Van Helsing, and mm -hmm. maybe Frank actually did have a posse, kind of like in the comics. He previously had Dracula slain them when they tried to kill him, 
and Frank was lucky enough to get away. And maybe that was the reason that he decided, uh, I'm going to give up the crossbows, the, you know, the, the typical classic way of hunting a vampire. And that's why mm -hmm. I'm going full tech. So then he has his reason of, you know, blades like over here, just sharpening up wooden stakes and he's keeping his iron and everything or his mm -hmm. steel, you know, nice and sharp. And Frank's just like over here. It's like, yeah, you're, you're fighting them with old school tactics. I'm going to make sure this bitch don't fucking leave. Like, you know, yeah. I, I have a grenade that is essentially holy water. And when you throw it, it's like it turns it into steam. So I like to see that bitch try to turn in the mist and get away from me. You, he would definitely nice, try to nice. find the modern day. And I would mm -hmm. think that would be fun, fun too to see. Because they tried to do yeah. that in Blade Trinity where they – they had some upgrade materials like you know instead of your classic crossbow or whatever um caretaker's daughter had like one of those those uh really strong i forgot what's the term for them for like uh uh like the bow and arrow but it was, it was a compound bow that okay, she had yeah. and that one you know obviously it shoots faster because of you know the whole mechanics and, and mm -hmm. the springs so it's like yeah let nathan take this and it's like mm -hmm. it's like maybe he knows someone from stark or yeah from some other big company and everything that, that kind of ties mm -hmm. in a little bit of that it it's like you know mm -hmm. the uh, larger mcu yeah it's like you know where the hell did you get all the money to buy this i was like some dude named happy it's you know it's like it, <laughs> i like it I like yeah it. you know and i like how happy is just because just a side note i like how happy has just become like this central mcu character yeah that you just see it everywhere and it just i, I love that i do Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do have a question. Do you so with Night Stalkers? You're introducing two uh, out of three of the main um, yeah characters of this movie. With that challenge, do you think it would be beneficial to like have cameos in in the first Blade movie of at least yeah? One, right? That's like, what I was like one or thinking two of them? along the lines that maybe Hannibal, like if if uh, Blade needed some type of intel and. Mm -hmm. Hannibal is kind of like his mole. It's like, oh, I've been around. Like, kind of like Falcon to uh, Steve Rogers. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, Blade's all like, what's the talk around the, I don't know, the fucking blood cooler or whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, and Hannibal could be like, you know, oh, such and such, X, Y, Z, exposition, exposition. And then in this one, it's like, I'm more than just your info guy. I'm fucking helping you. And Blade's mm -hmm. like, this kind of goes against the whole thing. And Blade's like, I'm already part of one team. I don't really need this. Which, it does add to the point that Blade needs needs allies. Blade cannot keep doing this. And with what Blade is going up against, he's not only going up against the guy that's partially his creator, but he's also going up against the Lord of all vampires. He mm -hmm. definitely knows he can't do that. Maybe, maybe in the Midnight Suns, he tried to hold his upper hand against Lilith and her kind. But mm -hmm. it did kind of show a little bit of like, I needed help. But he kind of still and had a little bit it. of that that edge of like, I had that, and it's like, did mm -hmm. you? Like that could have been a Moon Knight thing. It's like Moon Knight came yeah. and killed a Lillian while Blade was almost about to be death striked and everything, and mm -hmm. Blade's like, I had that, and Moon Knight's, did you? And it's like, it's like yeah. you were on the ground, and he did have your sword, you know. Mm -hmm. It could have that that type of banter and this right here goes to show of like yeah no if we're gonna do this right and if we're gonna do this proper to make sure we get both of these these big vampire like powerful vampires out of uh existence i have to learn to work with them no matter how much they yeah. get on my nerves because i figured that blade has that clint eastwood old man energy of the yeah. like i'll do it myself shit i can't do it myself i gotta fucking work with these assholes. and i was gonna say it's that conflict that you can have of working with a team and knowing that he needs that but also when it comes to that personal vendetta against deacon frost that's where that conflict comes in and he wants to go solo yeah and so mm -hmm. and maybe learning to kind of manage a smaller team it kind of teaches him maybe a little bit more leadership skills so then by the next midnight suns it's like okay it was a bit of a mess last time, but we're going to have our shit together. Mark, shut the mm -hmm. fuck up, you know? And <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know... Because yeah. I feel like Mark... Mark would definitely kind of be almost like the Deadpool character. Not so much the the the, the comedy of a 13-year-old, but it's more of the, mm -hmm. like, he has a smart-ass comment for anything, you know? Or, yeah. or and, he and... just has some type of complaint, depending on what personality it is. 
he has some. Type well, I was of gonna say complaint. with with having those different personalities, you can basically write him to to be whatever type of mood you need in that moment. Yeah. Right. Based off of what personality he's he's holding at the time. Yeah. So. And then with the Moon Knight show, it would have definitely Mark like try to better control you know of these of like you know maybe layla is like talking to him and like moon knight gets a little spicy with her and she's like i want to talk to mark not jake mm -hmm. and jake just mm -hmm. kind of smiles and then he just kind of goes away and then mark's like sorry about that i'm getting better at handling this and you know mm -hmm. they try to show a, a you know the work that he's trying to put in um yeah absolutely but yeah what what do you think horror noir you have these three vampire hunters now working as one smaller squad of the midnight suns going up against two huge you know entities in, in vampire lore of marvel i i think it works i like i said i think the only thing that i had was that challenge of introducing two out of three of the main characters in one film yeah you know what i mean i think that's probably the biggest hurdle i think but aside from that it it works so and, I, I think the, the dynamic between each of their own personal, um, the, the personal stake that each one of them has with at least one of the two, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just perfect. And you could definitely sit there and try that story of, well, we're going to kill the greater of two evils, so maybe Dracula mm -hmm. doesn't die. Yeah. But Dracula realizes, ah, I kind of fucking knew Deacon was on to something, but I guess I got yeah, you guys to think that's really good you could have at the end they only have one choice of who they're gonna take out and, and, and it kind of feels like a little bit of like well it's like a partial victory that they've won and everything mm -hmm. it's like we didn't kill them both but you know what now the lord of the vampires is definitely gonna keep an eye on us now mm -hmm. we got some eyes on us and everything and for him it's like thank you for taking care of the issue but at the same time maybe he'll look at blade you i'll deal with at a later time you know, because who knows, maybe in the first Blade film, maybe he killed Lilith and everything. He's like, I may have had some issues with my daughter, but blood is still blood, you know. Yeah. So that could easily put another future vendetta. And then, of course, when you start looking at Nathan and everything, it's you know, Nathan Drake's character, you know, him being the comedic relief. It's like, it's like, we'll talk later. And he like looks at me. He's like, I only wish my bloodline wasn't so stupid. You know, it's like, he, I, I, cause like, even in the comics, like with Tomb of Dracula, anytime that Drake tried to do something to uphand Dracula, Dracula would be like, oh, how can my bloodline be reduced to such idiocy? You know, it was always like this mm -hmm. uppity attitude he had with his own. And then he's like, I will yeah. kill you. And finally, you know, there will be no more embarrassment of my bloodline. And, you know, mm -hmm. so there's always something there. It's, it's definitely like Chinatown of like the greater of two evils essentially kind of was like it was gotten rid of but you still have that that i guess you would say mob boss that you know there, there's there's always going to be someone at the at the the height of the food chain uh yeah. no matter who you kill and those men are probably just gonna have to walk away and be like you know maybe jack would tell them you know you have until next nightfall or you have until the sun rises to get the fuck out of my house you know mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like if you guys are still here i'm not responsible for what my people do to you you know it, it, it's more of that it's like i will give you the benefit of leave like you know but mm -hmm. um but yeah that definitely would be a challenge to bring in hannibal and nate at the at the same time and so yeah probably but bring yeah, in back like in drake said, or, or, or back mm -hmm. in blade it's like yeah bring hannibal in have him be the intel guy yeah yeah i think that that right there at least fixes it because then you're only introducing one character yeah and so yeah so um with that being said uh, I think this one right here, you're going to give me the same complaint about Phase 2, the same thing with Phase 1, was maybe some of the placement of the movies and, uh, and the shows and everything. Our next one is going to be Ghost Rider Road to Damnation. Uh, and this one have Robbie Reyes is haunted by the demonic spirit of Eli Morrow and a looming pack with Mephisto. Seeking guidance from Johnny Blaze, the original Ghost Rider, as Robbie battles for control over his soul, he discovers a sinister plot by Mephisto to manipulate the Darkhold for his own malevolent purposes forcing robbie to confront his inner demons and making a fate uh, a faithful choice and we could probably have that maybe the dark hold was lost to lilith at the end mm -hmm. of that and mm -hmm. so it's like where did it go it's like maybe mephisto got a hold of it because i think ironheart is supposed to tease mephisto's first appearance oh, okay from, from... i know that 
it, yeah. it was so funny keeping up with WandaVision. And everybody speculated that's when we were going to see Mephisto. Yeah. And for the longest time. And so it, it's it's... It's about it's about time they bring him in. I do so. want Jason Isaacs, who did Mephisto for the uh, the Midnight Suns video game. I want him to play mm-hmm. Mephisto. I think he would do such wonderful. All he has to do is just do the mocap and everything. That's all he's got to freaking yeah, do. Absolutely. And then after that, it's like his voice, everything. It's mm-hmm. like it's like a fine wine that after probably a couple of sips, you realize it was poison. You know, and yeah, um, mm-hmm. I definitely felt like that. So. What do you think about maybe instead of this just being now what the last Ghost Rider film is, this is a road story that kind of brings mm-hmm. older fans back from the original Ghost Rider comics of Johnny uh, mm-hmm. and changes up to a Western vibe. So Yeah, absolutely. I, I think having the that change, the first, like you said, the first one would be take place in Los Angeles. Yeah. And so, and so having that, you know, location shift. This could be Nevada. That, yeah. Um, let me see. Because I don't know if Absolutely. Mephisto and will then... already be introduced by now. So who knows? Maybe we'll know who Mephisto is at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze is perfect. I know you also have Danny Ketch, but Johnny Blaze just seems to be the fan favorite. So uh, there was a video I watched earlier that talked about the history of it, and a lot of people compared Danny Ketch's Ghost Rider to the Guy Gardner of. Green Lantern says, like, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. yeah Good intentions, sure. but he's an it's asshole. So, it's so funny because the majority <laughs> of the Ghost Rider comics I have are from the Danny Ketch era. Oh. It just just so happens that that's what ended up in my collection for some reason. I have, I think, the and so. first five, five or eight issues. It was, like, back when they were trying to re-release the original Danny Ketch run as, like, mm-hmm. little volumes, and it would have, like, I think, uh-huh. like, five to eight issues or so, and mm-hmm. I loved them, but for some reason they weren't selling so marvel was like all right we'll just stop i was like yeah. i was like these are like reprints and like the color looks so good it's like mm-hmm. who thought in the 90s you would want demonic ninjas to fight a ghost rider yeah <laughs> you yeah. know and, and and the reintroduction of scare of like their scarecrow and everything as like this mm-hmm. undead you know contortionist it's pretty fucking creepy like you know the 90s Absolutely. was very edgy with its horror Mm-hmm. But uh, but what, what do you think overall about the road story, changing it all up and everything while trying to still think, keep it at its core? Yeah, I think that's that's really well thought out. I think that, and I don't think that there's because there's only one series in this second phase, right? What do you mean? As far as um, uh, you mean TV like shows, movies versus yes, yes, movies. Yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think that it's fine to have back to back movies in that case. So, um, but yeah, I know I, I really like the the synopsis, everything. Um, I think a lot, like you said, is just uh, hinging on what they have going on in the MCU regarding the Dark Hold and other stuff uh, from now until then. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and uh, this can also have some teases and maybe future villains for the Ghost Rider to fight as well. Post this mm-hmm. phase and everything, like this mm-hmm. film could easily explore a lot more of like Johnny's history especially with his own spirit of vengeance which is Zarathos. and mm-hmm. that's a he was a big villain in the 90s against midnight suns he was the one that was with lilith when she came back uh after her first defeat and most of her children were all dead that uh mm-hmm. him and um i have it written down here what the hell is it called the fallen that he, where lilith had her lilith he had the fallen and everything and so they bound together with what was left and they had like a real huge super group for the midnight suns to fight uh, mm-hmm. so it can easily tease that and uh who knows maybe they'll sit there and they'll tease danny you know where yeah you know it's like robbie is bummed out about his brother and johnny's like i had a brother too um he's like where is he i was like i don't know the asshole never calls you know <laughs> yeah you yeah. know it's something like that it's like he never calls it's like but you'll know when he's here you know, because maybe mm-hmm. he has, you know, I think they explained what Spirit of Vengeance, yeah, I think his was an ancestor and everything. So it's not kind of like tied to how Johnny was, but there's so mm-hmm. much to play in mythos and lore with this. And, and then of course, you can always be like, well, where is Gabe at? I was like, well, like, Gabe is being taken care of by a family friend. Well, mm-hmm. m- Robbie had to go do the Midnight Suns thing. And maybe whatever yeah. happened afterwards of that, maybe after the battle, 
where they all thought like well we stood uh and and we fought and we won even though it was messy and then they were like where's robbie at and then bam you hear the hell charger just burn out and everything and yeah. maybe whatever was in that fight whatever happened to him maybe that what sets him off on the road to damnation that there could have been a lilith that could have made him see a future or lilith could have made him see a future of you know if you stay around your brother your your brother will die you know mm-hmm. and maybe that's what that what sends him off and everything um, nice nice i like that yeah it, it, it's something that where that film is i don't really think it should technically be like the midnight sun's going out for shawarma like no mm-hmm. i definitely do feel like maybe this battle while they did win it took a lot out of them and so phase two is going to be soul searching it's going to be them like we have our our issues and now we're going to work on it night stalkers is yeah. for blade to work on his leadership skills and learn to work as a unit you know because mm-hmm. again maybe in that one they were messy and everything in midnight suns and you know and ghost rider maybe danny uh, not danny robbie saw something and it made him burn rubber after the fight you know it's mm-hmm. like i gotta save my brother and the only way to do that is by not being around him and maybe that road story will have it where johnny's like you know i used to think running away from my loved ones did it too and it's all mm-hmm. like are we talking about your brother and i was like well no there's always a woman involved and everything and you get Roxanne, you know, you, Mm -hmm. you get, it's like, I left the whole family behind because I did not want them, but all what it got was them being easily, easily prey to be wrapped up in danger and everything. And, you know, they're like, well, where are they now? It's like, the kids are hidden, but my wife is still in hell. So then that got, that has Johnny maybe a reason to be in this, you know? So there's multiple different elements to go into this and, um so it's more than just robbie's story it's maybe it's johnny's redemption uh, mm-hmm. but we're gonna move into moon knight season three um i don't know how many seasons you could really pull out of a moon knight because he generally he tends to kill his villains like punisher it's not a long yeah. rogues gallery yeah. um but in this one coming back for s- season three moon knight's connection to Konshu deepens as he uncovers ancient texts for telling the rise of the elder god linked to lilith's ambitions Battling against the resurrected Shadow Knight, Randall Spectre, and horrors unleashed by the Dwarf, Moon Knight navigates a labyrinth of deceit and betrayal, confronting enemies from both mortal and supernatural realms in his quest to prevent the cataclysm foretold and the prophecies. So this one, I definitely made it feel like Midnight Sun's base, because it's like mm-hmm. his brother's coming back, there is an agent of Cathan being introduced, and eight to ten episodes. So we finally get to learn maybe a little bit more back history at this point about Cathan by one of his agents and that mm-hmm. Randall who used to go by a previous identity is now fully embraced the shadow knight and everything generally I always don't like movies or shows that do that where the villain is just the exact like carbon copy of the hero but mm-hmm. it's like colors are altered you know and everything but I feel yeah. like for this this would work of you know Maybe if in season two Bushman was there, Bushman did get his ass whipped. You know, both him and Randall. Mm-hmm. Maybe he killed Randall an episode before Moon Knight fought Bushman and took him out. And maybe he decided, well, I killed my brother, but for you, you're gonna, you're fine. You're, um, uh, you're gonna go to jail. Like I am, I am locking your ass up, or, or whatever, some other form of punishment because you turned my brother against me. You know, you're going to get something far worse than that. And this right here, it's more of the, like, it's the guilt and grief of what he did. And now that guilt and grief's come back. And, you know, we're learning more back history about Cathan, the Darkhold, whatever Lilith plans to gain. You can have a post credit scene where Lilith and the Dwarf are talking. You know, they're like, you know, we, we have a common goal here and everything. Mm-hmm. And, um... I know his name in the comics is the Black Dwarf, but I don't really think that that would pass. Calling him the Dwarf yeah. already is like uh, you would probably have to really rename it. But uh, but I feel like this like this won't be the end of the Moon Knight series, but it will be closing the door on the Lilith Cathan story with the tease at the end potentially giving us Bushmen or one of Moon Knight's rogue gallery villains. Maybe a villain that isn't a traditional Moon Knight villain can be in uh, 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 can be in one of the crossovers. Uh, yeah. So if we didn't already introduce Bushman, this may be the time to introduce Bushman. 
Uh, <laughs> but this is going to be like, okay, moving forward for here, you don't have to worry about Chick Cathon or Lilith because that's going to wrap up, you know, uh, yeah. uh, real quick and everything. So what are your thoughts and questions on Moon Knight Season 3? Um, I think it works that you're doing a more of a cataclysmic um, storyline with, you know, having the whole Elder God, Lilith, uh, all of that. Because in the previous season, you were more like, feel like street level, cult mm -hmm. stuff. You know what I mean? So that switch, I think, works really well. Um, I think that as far as you were talking about Shadow Knight being almost like a like a copy, I think that it's it's nice to see because Moon Knight is already on that edge of like anti hero. You know what I mean? And Shadow Knight is just a representation of what happens when you go over that. Yeah. And so so I, I think I, I think it could work if done well. Um And you could still have the personalities argue like Jake could be like, Wow, why can't you be cool like this guy? And he's like, Shut up, yeah. that's my yeah, brother. Exactly. And, and it's like we already killed him and he's all like, I had mm -hmm. no problems with it. You know, or mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe Jake would probably actually feel bad because maybe Jake would be like, "Yeah, I know exactly." It's like you think that you completely walked away, but no, I watched. I watched it all because there's mm -hmm. still like now this whole level of even at the end of Moon Knight, how much now has Jake been walking around to the point that you know? Because uh, I forgot what's the other personality, not Mark, but um, uh, fuck. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, Mark, I'm, I'm going Jay, back can to you have, uh... oh. Grant, Stephen Grant, because, you know, that, that's, oh, okay. the, that's the archaeologist. Mm -hmm. So Stephen didn't even know about Mark. So that whole mm -hmm. season was all about them learning each other. And then I feel like in the next one, it's going to be them having to learn and live with Jake. And so this one is all like, well, how much has Jake been hiding from Mark and Steve? Mm -hmm. You know? And you can have it, you can have the conflict ramp up that Shadow Knight's fully converted one of the personalities. And now that personality is trying to take over completely. There you go. You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah. And so that that adds a little bit of uh, and something to the it, season. All of Moon Knight's allies are over here. It's like, you, you can't give in to that dark side no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm already kind of there, though. It's like, I killed my brother, you know? <laughs> and, and it's yeah. like, there were some demonic entities. I butchered them. I have done some things that probably were a lot more vicious than what I'd previously done in the past and everything. Mm -hmm. And Jake's like, eh, I don't know. I still think I've done worse. It's like, but still, it's that fact of it's the coming of reality. And season three could definitely have him test his sanity of how much is yeah. too much. If I Am I already over that line? If I Have I completely crossed over to the point that morally – no matter if I killed a guy because of what he did, did I do it for a good moral standpoint or did I do it just because I enjoyed it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there could be that. I like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel bad for all the future writers of Moon Knight and everything. They're all like, <laughs> yeah. be like, like how the fuck <laughs> no, did we write that? God, that's going to be dark. I'm going to need so much therapy after this. Like, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, are, are, are we wrapped up with, with Moon Knight? I think so. I think so. So we're going to take a real quick left turn. This has technically already been done. There is a show called Hellstrom that can be watched on Hulu. Unless you have the Hulu um, Disney bundle ESPN thing, then you can watch it on Disney+. Plus. Hellstrom Bloodlines. Uh, this is going to be an introduction mostly because I have the characters have a huge part of it. And it's very synonymous for Age of Ultron's the Maximoff twins. And this one we have mm -hmm. the Hellstrom twins. Damien and Satana Hellstrom, siblings with a legacy of both infernal and divine heritage, confront their estranged father, a powerful demon lord, seeking to exploit his children's powers. As they grapple with their dual natures and moral ambiguities, Damien and Satana must forge alliances and make sacrifices to prevent their father's machinations from tipping the balance of power in hell and on earth. Uh, much like reintroducing Robbie Reyes in the MCU, we can still use the same actors, Tom Austin and Sidney Lemon from Hellstrom, uh, to play the siblings, but have a more horror fantasy element to the series compared to the more grounded approach that was used on Hulu. I really wanted to sit there and see more demons. I wanted to see more of the 70s horror stuff. Like, I maybe didn't want to sit there and see the house on fire lake, but maybe we could see the house on fire lake. And, you know, maybe that's where Santana lives. 
and everything and where the lives of where these two siblings are separated it's gonna bring them together mm-hmm. maybe Santana is more in tune with her infernal powers than Damien is but mm-hmm. regardless they have their father to deal with he wants to take over another section of hell and expand his legion expand his power and he plans to use his children to do it and yeah. I think like the one thing out of left field that would fill in this it's let's just go horror fantasy you know let's have these okay. siblings one that maybe has traversed this a little bit more than the other um and have them reconnect and in the end maybe sis is taking over what dad's running in hell after killing mm-hmm. and damien's like all right well you take care of the shit that happens down there and if any of it comes up here i'll take care of that yeah and have that you know uh, what do you think Absolutely. about that? Or did you even see so, Hellstrom? I, I never, I never saw Hellstrom. Um, I actually didn't really know anything about these characters, so I did a little bit of research before. Um, and I, I really love the story. I mean, I the the origin that I read is essentially their their mother, um, or let's say, uh, is it Lucifer? That uh, or, it's different names because some of the Hell Lords have used the term Lucifer, but okay. like uh, I, I think, think the one was, I read, it had they, they did use the name Lucifer. Okay, um, but basically he did like the whole Zeus in disguise, right? Um, oh yeah, and, yeah, and, and uh, seduced. Uh, what what was her name? I know you mentioned it earlier. The mother. I didn't mention the mother's name. No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Because there's um, Damien so, and Satana. Those are the siblings. Mm-hmm. Yes. So their mother um, essentially married Lucifer in disguise. Um, he was wanting to have children so that he could perform some type of ritual. Um, Damien was... I don't think in the origin I read that they were twins. I think Dame, Damien was born first. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think a couple, two years later was Satana. Um, so the mother walked in on a ritual that was happening with the father and she essentially just went batshit crazy she ended up in a a mental institution and i'm trying to remember exactly how it played out from there but he took satana to hell basically to live with him and i don't remember i think damon ended up just in in foster care so believe it or not that's practically almost a shot for shot that's what the hellstrom show was oh okay but but okay, but, but in you. this one the siblings are together but satana mm-hmm. at a young age her father took her away gotcha. and everything but okay. their father who is a hell lord was masquerading as a serial killer got you okay and the mother is in a psychiatric uh place and everything that's like very religious and damien and satana but they called her anna and everything mm-hmm. um they would kind of frequently visit so anna doesn't really like being there because she's like you know why do we keep coming here she's not getting better well all of a sudden mother is possessed by a demon and it's like you know i have my eye on you and everything and it's pretty much it teases up that whatever is going on uh mm-hmm. daddy's coming back and daddy wants you know this new girl this new child that is apparently supposed to be like the next um i think it's supposed to be like the spawn that's supposed to help him take over like i don't think it's really quite like an antichrist antichrist but it's on that level of antichrist power but there is this child that does have some remarkable power and the hellstrom siblings have to stop that child from being corrupted and everything and but at the end of it daddy pops in he takes the little girl and then walks mm-hmm. away from that that's from what i remembered i saw it like years and years ago but it was still a sick series like they mm-hmm. even did the moment where damien was performing like an exorcism and like a part of his shirt burns because like every mcu person that has some type of symbol it only burns mm-hmm. a little bit and you actually see the, the pentagram and everything uh mm-hmm. like burned on it and uh <laughs> it looked cool but i was like i really wanted more i wanted to sit there and see either some horns come out i wanted to sit there see the trident made out of hellfire you know Mm -hmm. i I wanted Mm -hmm. to see more but uh 
I felt like th since they had such a limited budget and this was supposed to be their journey into the unknown, which was supposed mm -hmm. to be like their supernatural universe. Um, yeah, no, it, it didn't get. Was this about the same time they did uh, Runaways? That whole this era. was right afterwards because essentially there was supposed to be a Howard a Duck show. <laughs> there was a Modoc show. Uh, mm -hmm. There was supposed to, there was supposed to be a Ghost Rider TV show, which was supposed to have Gabriel Luna reappear, and this time he was he was going to the border the the, the Texas border to Mexico, and mm -hmm. fighting some demonic shit that's going on between the cartel and everything, okay. and uh, and then that all got canceled. But that was supposed to be essentially kind of like what people thought. Oh, are the Midnight Suns coming to the MCU through the Hulu? Uh, stuff and they were gonna have it through TV shows because to me I feel like when it comes to some of these characters, it's hard to kind of have them as uh, what is it? Um, it's hard to have them as characters when um, uh, when like they're they're so complex and they're so well developed that it feels like a TV show is your best way. Which to me, I feel like that's anything with serialized storytelling is you're never going to get all those great complexities, you know. Yeah. But you could try to hit some of the nail on the coffin of what makes that person who they are and add mm -hmm. your own complex twist to them that makes them good. Like Wesley Snipes' Blade. Blade never looked like that until after that movie. Like he kind of had mm -hmm. like the like the leather jacket and the spikes. But after yeah. that he always looked like Wesley Snipes. They, they drew him to make him look just like that because that is how pop culture remembers him. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the pop culture thing with Frankenstein. No one really sees it as what it was in the book, but everyone remembers mm -hmm. the flat top Boris Karloff look. So it was kind of yeah. like that. But um, any questions before we hit our wrap up on phase two? No, I, I think that if done well, like Hellstrom can be really, really interesting and and fun I don't, so I, I, I and that would be our mini series that that would probably be almost like moon night okay and not moon i was gonna say i night. feel like this would work this would work really well as like a maybe like a six -ish issue yeah or a six uh episode series yeah like like uh werewolf by night just give us the, like like mm -hmm. those little mini bite-sized horror they're like an hour a piece mm -hmm. and just let them run so we will close out our our final phase with Midnight Suns Shadow of Cathan. It's a working title here, folks. Just work with me. Uh, but as the Midnight Sun draws near, Lilith and Cathan's agent, the dwarf, scheme to awaken the Elder God using the Hellstrom twins, plunging the world into corruption. The Midnight Suns now reunited face their greatest challenge yet, as they must defeat Lilith once more and prevent Cathan's resurrection before time runs out. With the fate of the world hanging in the balance, the heroes must make the ultimate sacrifice to emerge victorious. Um... I feel like we can use the Hellstrom, the Hellstrom twins in this film, much like the Avengers Age of Ultron did the Maximoff twins, but capitalize better mm -hmm. on that subplot and tease maybe a separation of the siblings that could play in the future storylines. So yeah. even though the siblings are already separated again, but they at least have a communication, uh, they're better communicated. I feel like mm -hmm. this right here, they would be manipulated. You bring in Victoria Montesi. She's pregnant with Cathan through mm -hmm. some you know religious means and everything and lilith is going to sit there and use this to re to to just plunge the world in total darkness and have it reborn because of what happened to her children and everything that the midnight sons have gone through uh you know blade learning to be a better leader maybe mark getting his shit together a little bit more and kind of controlling mm -hmm. his personalities um we probably really haven't caught up with Werewolf by Night because we, we had this other introduction, so we probably figure that they're doing okay. You know, they're mm -hmm. just they're just lounging around the Abbey or something. I don't know. Um, but Robbie Reyes' is Ghost Rider, that he's probably a far more wiser and stronger Ghost Rider. That mm -hmm. this whole idea of running away from your loved ones, thinking that's going to help, it's not. You know, so maybe it, it took what they had to go through, and so now the Midnight Suns are a far far more cohesive team but mm -hmm. now the stakes are up because now they're fighting two twins that are you know the children of a hell lord one is ruling that region and the other one is just as dangerous um mixed in with probably the black dwarf we'll probably have maybe some leftover lilin that weren't immediately killed and everything and then you cut lilith herself what do you think about closing this out with 
this big shebang of the Elder God could possibly be born. Um, I don't really know how you, you would prevent that pregnancy, but yeah, I I don't know. Like that's the thing, right? Do you do you let it happen so they face the bigger threat, or do you prevent the big the big threat? Like you know what I mean? This could be kind of where Agatha comes in with the because uh, I if I remember right, Victoria Montesi at the end of the nineties she was still pregnant with Cathan, but I don't know if it works so well of we're putting her in a, uh, in a in a mystical like suspended animation to where you know the person's alive but it stops the baby's birth like like almost like it halts that time and yeah. everything and apparently she was able to come back and obviously Cathan was not born but i think like what it was is they were waiting out i guess the certain time frame and then like they could have just brought her back and everything and it's like all right well the baby's just a baby now it's not gonna be easily touched by the dark lord and everything and so yeah that, that's probably my thing is about ending this it's like i don't really want to have to end it with a giant cthulhu looking monster just like coming mm-hmm. out of the shadows because it's like it, when you have someone of that instance that's not something the midnight suns can fight you're gonna need the avengers the x-men that that's that's a Galactus level threat, if not higher. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, and you can always leave that open for a tie-in with. He, he could still the come Avengers. back. Yeah, he could still you know, come at, back. at a later point, and so that way you can tie in Midnight Suns with Avengers and all of that. Yeah. Um. So you you could always leave the door open or cracked. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um. I, yeah, I, I like it. I think that, um, maybe this time around, you know, with Hellstrom twins. Uh, don't kill off one of the <laughs> one of the two like they did in Age of Ultron. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, yeah, we, we we don't need Damien going all like you know uh, you didn't see that coming and he just drops <laughs> and it's like you know yeah. because I, I, I feel like we missed out on some some uh, solid Quicksilver content. Yeah. With that so and everything because that was sad because like i understand it goes to like the development of wanda's character yeah yeah i, I was just thinking the same thing but um, like, it, it did help with storylines when it came to wandavision and other other stuff but yeah but yeah like that could have been a post credit scene for his death like they like how they did at the beginning of um like something tease kind of like almost how like the beginning of infinity war where loki died and then it was all like, he's not really dead. I mean, we've seen him die. It was like, no, no, he's fucking dead. And so mm-hmm. it, you can easily have something along the lines of maybe one of Thanos's, uh, um, I forgot what what were what were his little four legion? They were called. Was it the Dark Order or the Black Order? Oh, the Katari. No, yeah. no. Oh, you're talking about the. Okay, uh, you're talking. Yeah, it is the Black Order. Okay, you're, yeah. Uh, you're talking about from uh, Infinity War. Yeah, you could have had that one mm-hmm. of them's already touched ground, and that they were looking for something to begin with. Like either they were trying to scout out, figuring out like something, and maybe Quicksilver fought them, and mm-hmm. he wasn't fast enough to like dodge a blade in the heart and everything, mm-hmm. and that happened like on Avengers property, and Wanda comes out and she's screaming and like. Pietro's just bleeding out. You could have had something like that, and at least mm-hmm. then you could have had maybe another few movies where, you know, Pietro's there. I, I believe that for one in Civil War, if Pietro was there, Captain America's team would have won already. He didn't. He'd at least knocked out at least three out of whatever team Tony was. Uh, he, mm-hmm. he would have knocked them all out and everything. Um, but yeah, I kind of like figure with this one, it, it would be like you don't really have to kill the twins off, but there is something that does happen to the point that maybe satana is like you know um maybe she has something against whatever happened and damien tries to tell her well no these are our friends and it's mm-hmm. like something had to have happened either she was touched by Cathan or something along the lines of maybe lilith lets something in like a last minute gift and it mm-hmm. turns satana to the or... point where she did not want to have anything to do like she's gonna mm-hmm. go rule hell and plot her own you know, yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, or maybe Damien gets corrupted. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, that would be a complete, like, 180 because you would assume that it would be Satana, right? Yeah. It, it's in the, it's in the, the dark, fucking She's name. the edgier of the two. Yeah. So, so yeah. I yeah. Like it. Uh, um, and, uh, yeah. What, what do you think overall about just 
this whole story Overall, phase one phase two phase one phase two i think this is great like i, I kind of like I just want to send this over to Kevin Feige and be like, hey, can we make this happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or at least some um, of this. Talking about it like gets me excited. Like It really does. I just I want to see more of this this supernatural element. I don't know really how. like Because of the issues they're having with Blade alone, I don't know how deep they're going to push into this stuff. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so like it, it, I, I hope to see more of it. Yeah. So. Me, me too, because... There is so much, there's so much that could be explored, and I think what it was was, even with the multiverse stuff, it still feels like a cosmic event, and I feel like mm -hmm. we spent way too much time in the cosmics. We got lost in the stars, yeah. and we need to explore either the ground level or we need to explore the supernatural. I feel like that's and really the they've... only way to do that. They they've opened the door with a couple of things like the I think was a werewolf uh, by night. Mm -hmm. um, They've opened up the door for a couple of things, and I think at some point, because they're in the multiverse saga right now, so they have a plan. Um, I'm assuming they're doing mutants next. Right? Yeah, that's what it um, seems like they're going for. Yeah, I, I think that's probably going to be their next go around, but at some point, they're going to have to dive into something else. They're just, they're going to have to. And the, so. They're going to hit a brick wall again, like they did. Because that's what I felt like mm -hmm. what happened. When Endgame happened, they ran into a brick wall, they thought they had a solid plan. And then they realized the people were against it, and they're like, well, shit, now we got to rewrite all this, and there's going to be some yeah. stuff that it didn't even matter that we just told it, because it's not going mm -hmm. to affect the full universe. And... A.K.A. Eternals. <laughs> yeah. at, at least yeah. from what I've heard from uh, the Captain America, is it New World Order? Yeah. And mm -hmm. everything. Uh, I think they are going to sit there and reference... The, the giant oh, celestial that's hand right. in the head. That's right. I, you can kind of see it in some of the uh, footage. Because now you, some you can people see think, that statue in the background. Some people think that's where adamantium is going to come from now. It's, it's going to be from the celestial, and it's all like... Oh, I, I oh. actually, if I if I remember correctly, I read that that celestial being is going to become the island Genosha. Ooh, I like so that. So I think that's, that's, I think, what was rumored. So, because wasn't nowhere all always like a celestial's like husk of a head? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. that would be something new because that's gonna be kind of hard to explain. Krakoa, you know, mm -hmm. it's like what is it? We've never discovered this island. And I was like, yeah, there's kind of a reason. It's a sentient island. It's always moving. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's why it's yeah, like it it's, you guys probably have taken pictures and it's like, well, it's supposed to be right here. He's like, I see mm -hmm. nothing. It's like, how do you lose an island? You know. It's yeah, all like it's yeah. like was there an earthquake? Like could it just have fallen? Like maybe it was just hollow land and it, everything just caved in. It's like mm -hmm. it's not here. We're not fucking diving. Like we wasted money on this excavation. Um, yeah. I did want to sit there though and bring up a post team up. So where could the Midnight mm -hmm. Suns go after the wrap up of the Lilith Kathan story? Uh, they could expand more in their roster and include such characters as Doctor Strange, Wong, Black Knight, other Ghost Riders from, and not just Danny. Like you could, mm. you could bring in. There's like one, I think it's Kushala, where they, they call her, I think like the Phantom Writer or something like that, or the Spirit, mm -hmm. the, the Spirit Writer, where she's like a Native American. I love her. I the, I saw the recent. I, I don't know Midnight much Sun. about her. I think I may have seen like images, but that's about it. She's like so wise and cool, but like mm -hmm. most of them are like, can you just say anything that's not like in a fucking riddle? It's like because every time <laughs> that she speaks, she speaks with such eloquence. But not like a like a like oh stuck up. It's like it's very much just that wise man, you know, mentality. Mm -hmm. But like most of them are all like, I would really like it if you stopped like talking in a riddle. It's like yeah. just say it, say what it is, and um, you could bring in Morbius, a living vampire, if they decide to mm -hmm. recast and reintroduce that character. Uh, again, as, as I thought Jared Leto did a fantastic job, <laughs> but a lot uh -huh. of the writing was terrible absolutely um, um yeah brother voodoo so then you can start bringing in shamanism and you know voodoo mm -hmm, magic mm -hmm. and and that stuff into it uh new villains such as the hood blackout corrosion which that's in the midnight suns comic that i was reading that i told you about uh okay uh -huh. that one was connected to agatha harkness uh zarathos mm -hmm. and the fallen which is atrocity i think it's ember uh metachurs patriarch and uh uh salem I think mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think that's how it's pronounced. The Salem. So like you have the Fallen. So like I think it would probably be a little too soon to introduce another faction of villains, but it yeah. would be something of like okay, we have like another threat 
It's like, do you need all of us? It's like, we just need a small core group to take care of this. And so you can easily have it where maybe some of them go elsewhere. Maybe Moon Knight is dealing maybe with Avengers level threat. So maybe Moon Knight's mm -hmm. moved on. So we need to find that replacement. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you can always have it that uh, the focus could shift on individual character arcs, exploring personal struggles and growth. Um, as much as I love Werewolf by Night, I don't see it as an actual TV show. It may mm -hmm. could try again at another movie if they try to do something in which, uh, unless it's another Blade film where maybe Werewolf by Night's in it, and it's like, well, what's your play in this fight? It's like, oh, he enslaved my family from like a long mm -hmm. time ago. Kind of the reason I'm the way that I am. So then that wraps up that character's story because it's like, well, if he can kill Dracula, maybe he'll think that'll break the curse and everything. And mm -hmm. um, and then if that doesn't work, then Elsa could be like, well, we can always try finding the Darkhold again. And it's like, where is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that could easily place up Mephisto right there. You know? Yeah. Um, there's so much that you can go through. Um, but yeah, like, this is more, like, I kind of feel like when it comes to certain phases like this, I feel like it's better to have short short phases mm -hmm. to kind of keep things interesting. Because I feel like, kind of like how the MCU is now, if you try to dr drown it out with, like, doing four sequels of, like, a specific character, it's like, you're only treading so much ground, you're bound to just, yeah. you know, run around. You're going to run out of content at some point. Yeah, and everything, but... Um, yeah thank you so much Krypton. but it also yeah it also makes sense too because they are a smaller faction so you i mean i don't feel like you need to do as much but yeah but yeah no thank thank you for having me i this has been a lot of fun like i've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this i did so. too and everything uh folks uh go follow krypton uh oh shit did you oh oh okay hold on uh no worries I'm over here trying to shout you out. Oh, no wonder. I misspelled your freaking name. <laughs> I am oh, so sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, folks, go follow Krypton for all of your all of your comic book needs and everything. He does comic book of the day uh, on his streams and everything. He's last playing The Last of Us Part 1. Uh, also, too, uh, he runs Comic Book Club and everything. We're currently going through From Hell, which is a hell of a bitch to read and everything. It's It's dark. It's dark and everything. I give Alan Moore that he yeah. can write some darkness and everything. But thank you so much again for being here. Um, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I was thinking about teasing, but you know what? Like, I guess like it's mm -hmm. already like in the chat, so folks know. So our next, uh, our next script club is gonna be the twenty second of September, and I finally got my hands on the pilot script for the Dark Tower. This was supposed to be what Ooh. came out after the movie. It was supposed to be connected. Uh, they finally dropped it. I was like, you know what? I love the Dark Tower. I need to find another guest. We're still looking for those guests uh, for that. So if you're interested, definitely sit there and let me know. Uh, but yeah, we're going to cover the Dark Tower. So we're moving from one IP of Marvel Comics and the Supernatural Realm to Stephen King and everything. Uh, thank you again once more, Krypton, for being here. Yeah. And. Thanks, uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one.